Marco Pano Palma. Mike Wallace, Special Operations. What are you doing here? It was a no-show. What? Motika didn't make the rendezvous. Are you sure? If he'd been there, I'd have lifted him. Any indication that the unwashed knew he was jumping? None. And he was all right when Gary checked him last night. Checked him? A very discreet check. And I drove halfway round Warsaw first. I don't care if you rode up and down the Vistula. You leave defectors clear as soon as the pickups pass. That's enough. Motika has been dithering for weeks. Couldn't make up his mind whether to defect to us or take off on his own for Sweden. But in the end, he chose us. Yes, and in consequence, I asked London for a lift. So it was important we weren't made to look stupid. In what way? We had to make sure that Motika was behaving as agreed. All we did was check that he was running to the plan. Meaning that if he wasn't, you could have cancelled the lift before I left London. Precisely. And saved face. It is vital that a station retains its credibility with London. And to hell with the operation. May I remind you, Wallace, that I am head of station here, and a senior head of station at that. We're not debating your value, Mr. Wheatley, but Motika's. Weren't you briefed in London? I want a straight answer from you. How important is he? Very important. Maybe the top man in the East on particle beam technology. Good enough for the Russians to take him to Moscow every time they get a problem. We could still make the flight, unless I have to bust him out. Oh, no. No bust out. You've probably blown yourself by coming here. Probably, but we don't know what's happened to Motika. He may be waiting in his flat with half the citizens' militia parked outside. He may be okay, but has lost his nerve and needs encouragement. I'll draw a weapon and ammunition, a 38 Smith and Wesson. I'm not arming you, and I'm not approving a bust I'm out. I'm a special operations officer, Mr. Weekly, requiring your cooperation. You're a sandbagger throwing his dead weight I don't have time to argue. If you get Martiker away, what then? If he's OK, I'll get him to the plane. If not, I'll take my chances with the car. To go where? Russia? Czechoslovakia, East Germany? Your problem. Establish a safe house and open a room. It's utter madness. It was utter madness to check a defector within 24 hours of lift. If Martika's marked, they'll take you as well. That had occurred to me. And we'll be left to clear up the mess. Sorry to spoil your day. Monsica?
flight LO341 to London. It departs Okensia Airport at 7.50 tomorrow morning. Do not miss it, Mr. Wallace. But you don't know that. Look, the flap was squared away superficially, but there had been a punch-up. There was Motika's wristwatch on the floor, broken. There was a candlestick broken. And this ticket is courtesy of the citizen's militia who knew my name. So? So Motika got snatched and he didn't want to go. He put up a fight. But the unwashed were ahead of him. They knew he was running to SIS. They might have guessed. They were guessing before that clown confirmed it for them last night. Just a minute. And that clown was acting on your orders. If you want to get yourself reported, you're going the right way about it. Reported? I'm the one who's going to be doing the reporting. He could cause trouble. Not if we cause it first. Let's get a signal off to London. Ah, Neil. You wanted to see me, sir? Immediate from Warsaw. Don't recall it? Personal to me from head of station. Operation Red River. Regret to report that contrary to station advice, Sandbagger 2 elected to attempt bust out. Motika now in state custody. Sandbagger 2 apprehended by militia but permitted to proceed. He's ETA London 040930 Zulu. Motika would have been a major triumph. A particle beam expert for whom the Americans would have given their right arm. I don't understand it. I do. The sandbaggers think they have a God given right to behave as they like on station. Well, the sandbaggers must. And they been... think that because you tell them so. Wallace must have had his reasons, sir. Huh? Contrary to station advice. <laughs> How many times have I read that? And why was the junior sandbagger sent on such a crucial mission? I've only got two sandbaggers. That is an observation, not an answer. I am entitled to three. So is that. And you're not entitled to three while there's a temporary manning standard in force? Wallace isn't the junior sandbagger, sir. He's the second senior. He's junior to Kane. And Kane's sitting on his backside down in the hutch. He's in my office, as a matter of fact. And the deployment of sandbaggers is my business until you make it mine, with a shambles of an operation which has cost us a very valuable prize. Well, let's wait and hear Wallace's side, shall we? Is there any reason why the head of station should lie? Don't they take a course in it? I'd be obliged if you'd keep your cheap remarks to yourself. Will that be all, sir? For the moment. You read this rubbish from Delhi. Never mind that. Red River. Is Mike OK? Yes, but he blew the job. He went for a bust out. Well, Mottigan must have missed the rendezvous. And was boxed. Presumably. Well, Wheatley should have stopped him. The number two should have stopped him. What's his name? Sherbin. They advised against a bust out, and now Mottigan's in some Polish prison. Oh, Jesus. There's peels going spare, I suppose. Driving another nail into the special section's coffin and mine. And maybe he's right. Why? We sent the baby sandbagger to land a big fish. We sent him because he knows Warsaw, and I don't. Even so, he's young, keen to prove himself. He's not that keen. Didn't he? When I was the baby, I did a bust out in Prague. When you were the baby, you did one where? Cairo? Yes, I had no choice. No? Uh -huh. Would you do it now? You wouldn't, would you? It's something you do once and find the hell out of yourself so much, you never do it again. Perhaps Mike had no choice. Yes, yeah, well, we know tomorrow. What time does he get back? 9.30. Which means he could be out of the section by lunchtime. I needn't ask if you had a good trip. It was a lousy trip. You went for a bust-out. I went to Motika's flat prepared to do a bust-out if necessary. It wasn't necessary. Mike, you know the rules by now. Violence is a dirty word on station. So is sandbagger. Sir. Exactly. That's why we have to watch our backs. You have just given Wheatley the opportunity of putting a knife straight between your shoulder blades. What's he said? That you went for a bust-out against station advice. That you were taken by the militia but were released. True, as far as it goes. Well, isn't that far enough? You don't go crashing around Eastern Bloc countries with guns stuck oh, up each Come off it, will you? You think I enjoyed it? I went for Motika because I thought we might owe it to him. Because if he was boxed, it was the firm's fault. Go on. 
The station ran a check on him the night before the lift. They did what? I was trying to recoup the situation because Motika was important and blameless. I think we'd better hear the rest of it. Anything else? Isn't that enough? I spoke to Wheatley on the phone this morning. Open code, of course, but his version is considerably different to Wallace's. He denies running a check. He says that the station played it absolutely by the book. Motika didn't make the rendezvous. Wallace panicked and decided to go in with all guns blazing. Well, that's a lie. You know sandbaggers don't like using guns. I know Kane doesn't. You didn't, but Wallace? He's to be taken off special section duties pending an investigation. To hell with that. I beg your pardon? I believe Wallace. I believe the station chief. Well, you would, wouldn't you? Why? You're bound to sympathize with Weekly. You were a head of station yourself. And you were a sandbagger. The fact is that Weekly is infinitely more experienced than Wallace, and he's a good officer. He could be the next DA. Quite. Weekly's got a lot to lose at this stage of his career. But is it likely that they would check Martica the night before? Yes, it's typical of a station to be more concerned with his image than the job. And equally typical of a sandbagger to blunder about, oblivious to the political consequences. Blunder about? By risking his liberty, if not his life, to bring out a defector? What he risked was a major diplomatic incident with Poland. You'd love to get rid of Operations Directorate, wouldn't you? What? You'd sit here for six months writing minutes to each other before you realized we'd gone. We discussed your promotion prospects the other day. Yes. One of my criticisms, as you'll recall, was of your insular, not to say insolent, attitude toward other directorates and authority. If you suspend Wallace, that'll all be academic, because I'll leave. I won't be threatened, Neil. Nor will I, sir. Wallace is non-operational from now until the inquiry is complete. Then I want a doctor to see you. As a director, you have that right. Someone has to be lying. Agreed. Then the most sensible thing is an investigation, during which it wouldn't be sensible to send Wallace on a mission. Look, Neil, he armed himself against station advice. He walked into what could have been a trap, was willing by his own admission to try a bust out. Only because the station put him in that intolerable position. Not according to Wheatley. Wheatley's protecting himself. Then we must establish that before we let Wallace loose again. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not prepared to work the special section with one sandbagger. I'm also not prepared to have Wallace prejudged. Unless, of course, you intend to relieve Wheatley on station during... That's the... impractical, as you well know. All I know is that it is impractical to suspend a sandbagger. Very well, we'll compromise. If we get a special operation, Kane will go. If we get another during Kane's absence, Wallace can go. I can't accept that, sir. I'm not asking you to accept it, Neil. I'm telling you. Either I run my department as I see fit, sir, or I go. Are you set on destroying your career? It's a question of loyalty, sir. I expect total loyalty from my sandbaggers. And in return, they have the right to the same loyalty from me. You realize that if I agree to normal working now at your insistence and the investigation goes against Wallace... You'd ask me to go with him, yes, sir. All right, normal working. But you will cooperate fully with the deputy chief's investigation. The deputy chief's? We're investigating a senior head of station, not just a sandbagger. But Pew believes the station. He told me so himself. I'm quite confident that the deputy chief will be fair and impartial. Well, I'm not. Don't push your luck, Neil. You haven't much left. Understood, sir. Well, I reckon you dropped yourself right in it, up to your neck. I had to. I allowed Mike to be suspended. He'd never be sure of me again. A sandbagger has got to believe his D-Ops will die in the ditch for him come what may. I suppose so. He thought that you'd abandon him over this. <laughs> and abandon him because of pressure from above. Yeah. It's important. It's always a comfort to me on a mission to remember you don't drink. You might not know what you're doing. At least you're not smashed out of your brain while you're doing it. You've no idea what this coffee does to me. It ain't coffee, it's chemical warfare. <laughs> Perhaps we should send some up to Peel. <laughs> He's not going to find for a sandbagger, is he? Let's wait and see, but I must admit, given his usual attitude, it's extremely unlikely. Burnside? you would like to see as soon as possible. I'm on my way. 
clean one, Smith. Come in, Neil. Care for a drop of rather indifferent plonk? No, thank you, sir. Sit down. If you can switch your mind from Poland to Sweden. Exclusive top secret from head of station Stockholm. Yes, sir. Harry Madison, do you know? Yes, I do. He's pro special thing. Good. He's got himself a problem. British businessman called Littman. Arms contracts with the British and Swedish governments. But appears to be hooked into the KGB. Well, we can ask MI5 to check him out at this end. It's a little more complicated than that. The KGB seems to be working Littman, and Littman may be working the station number two. Stockholm number two? That's Pat Bishop. Bishop, yes. But he's one of the best intelligence officers we've got on any field station in the world. Madison seems pretty certain. Bishop has dealings with Littman, and Littman's having an affair with a Swedish girl who's known to be KGB recruited. Then we'd better take a look at Bishop. Special section or counterintelligence? Special section, sir. If Bishop's been turned, I'd rather put a sandbagger against him. Kane? Not sure. I'll have to work it out. Very well. It's your decision. Yes, sir. I should take it. Yes, I know you should. But if you go to Stockholm, Mike could think that we are suspending him. Now, why should he? He's just come back from one job, so I'm taking the next. But if I send him, it would demonstrate not only to him, but to Peel as well, that we're standing by him. I don't know, maybe. It's a tough one. I mean, I'm a rotten investigator, I know that. I've had some experience, made a few of the mistakes already. I know, but I still think I ought to send Mike. Look, he cocks it up, and you might well do. He's going to cut the ground right from under your feet, Smith. I know that too. Why can't you send both of us? That's too obvious. Mike would read it. Anyway, I can't tie up both sandbaggers in one investigation. But if he realises that he's sending him just to prove a point, it's going to put him under more pressure. Well, I'll say he's got to go because Bishop knows him. Well, it's true anyway, yeah. Right, let's get him on his way. Uh, get an outside line, will you? Book an appointment as soon as possible, Jeff Ross. Do you mean Jeff Ross or do you mean a shapely assistant? You mean Jeff Ross? Sam? <laughs> Terrific, isn't he? Eh? Jeff, have you heard a single word I've said? Yeah, I heard you, Neil. Your boy's out on a limb and Peel's busy sawing down the tree. So, said boy mustn't blow his next job. Yeah, which from the sound of it is all too likely. Exactly. Well, if I were you, Neil, I'd buy a farm. Of course, you could always get a job with London Transport. Jeff, I need backup. Yeah, I know that, Neil. The only time you ever come to see me is when you want backup. Karen? Karen is an officer of the Central Intelligence Agency. The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. Terms of her contract don't allow her to work for a foreign government. Very funny. Now, come on, how about it? Well, I don't know. I'd have to check with Langley, Virginia, where my bosses live and breathe and have their collective being. Then get on with it. Okay. But what's in it for me? I'll buy you dinner. Ugh, come on, one lousy dinner? Now, Karen's covert action staff. She's not the tea lady. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. Why don't you brief her yourself? Well, I wasn't planning to send her a street map of Stockholm. No, no, I mean tonight, over dinner. I need her in Stockholm tonight, flight at 1920. Yeah, but well, you can forget that. I won't get clearance out of Langley before midnight. Come on, use your initiative. Send her an anticipation of approval. Uh, the name's Jeff Ross, not Neil Burns. Really? I thought your name was Cupid. Huh? Your matchmaking. Come on, what are you talking about? Just trying to keep you alive, old buddy. Now, you need to relax in the company of a nice, delightful, entertaining, uh, you know, lady. Besides, you can always put it on your expense account. My name's Neil Burnside, not Jeff Ross. Oh, come on. Can't you screw one dinner out of those I guys? I can't screw a taxi fare out of them. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Lots of free transport when you're driving the buses. All right, all right. I'll buy you dinner. God, you English are so romantic. Hey, Karen, put your clothes on and come on in here, will you? Yes, yes. How about the inn on the park? Chinese takeaway, more like. Hello, Neil. Hello. Not playing with your dog, Mr. Ross? Ah, if only he could wag his tail like you. Embarrassing, isn't he? Yeah, well, I'm practicing to be president. Okay, park your best feature. Ah, now, the uh, secret intelligence service is in the deep fertilizer. Again. They want you to bail them out. Okay. It's a big one. It's in Stockholm, and it's complicated. Det är det där, utan det får de tänka ut sen. Och det är det.
Back, Wallace. Yes. Harry Madison. Hello, sir. Come in. Welcome to Stockholm. How is the flight? Fine. Sorry I couldn't collect you. It seemed an unnecessary risk. Photographs of subjects, haunts, addresses and maps. I'll spend the evening on them. Good. The problem's twofold. Firstly, a man called Victor Littman, British, talking to the Swedish Air Force about improved toss bomb sites for the Saab 37. Air weapons expert. Yes, but electronic rather than ordnance. Airborne computers, bomb sites, head-up displays. He works with the Royal Air Force, too. But? He's a hard drinker, a bit of a womanizer. Story of my life. Yes. But Littman's 56, and he's totally infatuated with a little blonde Swede of 27, 28, name of Pia Gustafsson. And she's KGB recruited. Oh, yes, there's no doubt about that. And the second part of the problem is your number two. Yes, that's right, Pat Bishop. I discovered it all by accident, but I now know for certain that Bishop and Littman are meeting secretly. They're using dead letter drops to each other, they're making bump contacts in crowded places, you know, the whole works. And passing what? Well, that I don't know. But whatever it is, it's going from Bishop to Littman, Littman to Gustafsson, and Gustafsson, of course, all the way to Jasinski Street. Hmm. Bishop's married, isn't he? Yes, happily, with two daughters. Money troubles? Anyone who works for the SIS has money troubles, Mike. But his are no worse than yours or mine. Blackmail? I don't see how. He doesn't play around. Non-smoker. No drugs, of course. Moderate drinker. In fact, he's a damn good officer. He's very popular with the Swedes. I don't want to lose him, Mike. I don't think the service can afford to lose him. Yes, I'd like to place a call to London, please. Mike? Oh, good evening, sir. I've met up with the local storyteller, got the picture. But I'm not sure what I should do next. Are there complications? Uh, no, sir, it appears to be a straight A to B to C routing, and we know who D is. Question is then, Mike, what's going along the route? If it's a bag of sweets, we're all right. If it's anything less digestible, then we're in trouble. I appreciate that, sir, but I don't see how I can find out unless I make an interception. And if I do that, I risk blowing everything. Agreed. So don't intercept. Look, you might try and find out why B is in the chain at all. Why doesn't it go A to C, cut out the middleman? Yes, sir, but... Look, if I go in with both feet, I could louse this. Is there any chance of my big brother taking this one, sir? There's no need for that. But I'll send you some help. Maybe the prettier one from Grosvenor Square. She's sure to have played this game before. Sounds good to me, sir. All right, then, Mike. Keep me posted. I'll do that. Good night, sir. Good night. Yes, Neil? I've just had a phone call, sir, from Wallace, Stockholm. Yes? He's asked for backup. Does that present you with a problem? No, it gives me a great deal of satisfaction. Oh? Well, it takes courage for a sandbagger to admit he can't hack a mission. And if Wallace is the hothead that he'd been It branded, could be that he's learning. Yes. If so, I'm glad to hear it. But the Warsaw investigation goes ahead. The allegations are serious, Neil, on both sides. You'll be sending Kane? No, I hope to use Karen Miller. Will the CIA agree? Well, I hope so. It'll save committing both sandbaggers to one theatre. It means admitting to the CIA that we may have a double agent in Stockholm. I think it's more important that we find out the truth. All right. I'll be at home tonight if you need me. Thank you, sir. I told you. Mike's OK. And Pat Bishop? Yes, isn't that hard to believe? I would have staked my life on him. Mm. And for the same reason, Harry Madison would have thought 14 times before sending that signal. Mm. Anyway, I'm not sure we should be handling this. It's really counterintelligence. Could be. We won't know until we get some kind of line on it. Well, my five might have something on Lippmann. Yes, but if they haven't, they might wade in themselves and screw Mike. Yeah, Peel doesn't screw him first. <laughs> it's been ominously quiet from up there, hasn't it? Ah, Neil. There you are. Hello, William. Yes, sir. I found the main culprit, Warsaw. You know that Motika was either coming to us or going solo to Sweden? Yes, sir. Wheatley said so in a signal. Opsrum picked up the reference to Sweden, copied it to the Scandinavian desk, 
And the desk copied it to the station. So? Stockholm Station. Bishop. He'd have told his mates in the KGB. KGB would have alerted the Poles. What do you know about Bishop, sir? You know, don't you? I know, because the special section's handling it. Well, I know, because I'm the deputy chief. Exclusive top secret. Should be neat to know. On C's instructions, all Deltec signals come to me. Not much point in being the deputy, is there, if I can't take over at a moment's notice? Anyhow, I must get on. I'm off to Warsaw in the morning. Is that wise? I have to talk to Wheatley. Presumably, you've cleared it with the FCO. I mean, deputy chief of SIS going into the Eastern Bloc. Wellingham has no objection. I see. I'm willing to accept that it was Bishop that tipped the polls and not the station's check. That is not the issue, Neil. The point is whether or not, as Wallace claims, and Wheatley denies, the station made a check at all. Yes, but Wheatley's hardly likely to break down and cry because you go there. I was an instructor at Ashford once. Interrogation techniques. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the polls arrested him? We thought he's been brainwashed by Wheatley. There's no way out of that one. He's gonna give Mike a hammering, isn't he? You doing anything tonight? I thought I'd catch up on a spot of crochet work, yeah. Could you hang around the option? Are you going out? Working dinner. Wondered when she was gonna get a briefing. Well, that's one for the book, isn't it? Next time Ross wants a favor from us, he's gotta take Peel to dinner. So one of the important things will be to discover what Bishop's motivation is. Well, if it isn't money, women, drugs... Could be idealism. Long-term sleeper? Philby was brilliant, too. Would have been safer to have given it to CI. Hmm. But there are arguments for the sandbaggers taking it. I mean, it could be politically sensitive. And anyway, it was a point of principle to send Wallace? Yes. Will you really go? If Peel finds for Wheatley. I'll have to. Or is it that you want to? I'm sorry? Jeff's told me this is the second time you've offered your resignation in a matter of weeks. <laughs> have you had enough? Jeff's got some fairly wild theories, hasn't he? He's very fond of you and very worried about you. And prepared to discuss this with all and sundry, it would seem. But don't you ever want to share problems with someone you can trust? Problems? Isn't it true that a little while back, Peel told you he wasn't recommending you for promotion? Who else has Jeff informed? The Washington Post? Look, Jeff knows that you're a career man, that there is nothing in your life except the service. And so he... We wondered if you... if you're trying to orchestrate your resignation before... Before I'm passed over for promotion? Yes. Well, let's get the record straight. At this moment, I'm far too junior to be promoted. By the time I get into the promotion zone, Peel will have gone, the present C will have gone, the whole service may have gone, for all I know. And I'm far too busy to even worry about it. My sandbagger, too, could be fired by the end of the week. One of my very best station officers could be doubling, and I'm undermanned to the extent that I've got to ask for your help. That doesn't thrill me at all. I've taken you to dinner because Ross forced me to, not because I wanted to, and certainly not because I wanted to form a Lonely Hearts Club. Now, have you got any more questions? Hmm. Are you drinking Coke or vinegar? You're back early. Not a moment too soon. Anything from Mike? If there's any sense in me down some Swedish massage parlor. I see, like that, was it? No, it wasn't. It was civilized. Boring, but civilized. Yes, put him on. Mr. Ross coming on the line, sir. Oh. Jeff? I see. Understand. Thanks, Jeff. Bitch. What? According to Ross, Langley won't approve her using Miss Milner. I suppose it was asking a lot. Be your age. Ross hasn't heard from Langley. Little Miss Muffet went back to Grosvenor Square and said no. What the hell happened at dinner? Right, Sam. Sandbagger one to go to Stockholm first flight in the morning. Without official notification to Stockholm, sir? Affirmative. But ring the head of station at his home and let him know and tell Sandbagger two at his hotel. 
Well, the first flight's at 9.20, Willie. I may as well brief you now. Uh, you can always sleep next year. Well, don't sleep on the job. I want this one cracked early. And, uh, well, after lunch tomorrow, you can start on something else, hmm? Burnside, I'm at home. When are you seeing medicine again? This evening. According to Madison, Bishop's going to be out at three this afternoon to meet a Swedish contact. Well, if you take Bishop and I follow Lippmann, we may meet again. Wouldn't be surprised. How did you find me here? Trailed you. Wanted to say I'm sorry. For what? Last night. And because there's dumb sons of bitches at Langley won't let me work for you. Jeff went back to them. Protested. But it's no go. Well, it's not the end of the world, is it? Will you send Willie now? No. Mike can cope on his own. Willie went out on BA flight 650 this morning. Taking a lot of interest in this, aren't you? I'm interested in the outcome, yes. If the sandbaggers blow it. If Peel listens to Wheatley. Jeff's worried about me again, is he? Jeff doesn't know I'm here. That ought to tell you something. Yes. Yes. Those were the days. Still, you've done very well, Matthew. Knighthood must be just around the corner now. Ah, I suppose so. Won't make much difference to me, but it'll mean a lot to Margaret. And rightly. Always been my favorite lady. Oh, no pun intended. It is good to see you, Matthew. Though I could have wished it was a happier circumstance which brought you. Oh, I'm used to repairing the havoc wreaked by Burnside's boys. Burnside. He was insufferable as a sandbagger, and I don't suppose he's improved now. Not a great deal, no. Wasn't he engaged to that girl in operations? And she was killed. A girl sandbagger. The first and last. Shot dead in Berlin. Has it affected him? <laughs> Hard to tell what affects Burnside. <laughs> <laughs> Carter is, huh? Splendid. <clears throat> we thought we'd give you a little tour of the city. Cultural afternoon and a mildly alcoholic evening. Ah, lead on.
Well, nothing, sir. The deputy chief arrived safely in Warsaw. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. When's he due back? Uh, 9.30 tomorrow morning, sir. The same flight that Sandbagger 2 came back on. Den stora draken blev väldigt förtjust i farmors köttbudda. Så att när Bamsu och hans vänner taskade hem och högg draken ner. Den ställde sig utanför farmors hus och väntade på fler köttbudda. Den stora röda dagen och hela natten. Thanks. Hello, Harry. So, what happened this afternoon? Well, you two are going to start wondering about me. The bishop changed his mind. How? Well, it got to about three o'clock and I told him he had an appointment. He said no, it had been cancelled. Hence my waiting in vain all afternoon. Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, when did he tell you about this meeting with his Swedish contact? Yesterday afternoon. He told me he had to go out today about three. Mm. Well, Lippmann kept the rendezvous. Did he? Yeah, small bridge, about 10, 15 minutes drive from your office. Mm -hmm. Lippmann arrived there at 3.15, he stayed till 3.40. He got a bit twitchy in the process. Then what changed Bishop's mind? A tip. A tip from whom? Duty ops officer. Controller. Burnside. Burnside. Ah, a signals officer who decrypted your exclusive C, Peel, their PSOs. Any one of a dozen people. Yes, but if Bishop would tip, why didn't he alert Lippmann? Would you take the risk? No, I suppose not. The fact that he didn't turn up today is going to alert Lippmann. We could arrange to have his phones tapped, but we can't interfere with the Swedish mail. A little card into the post tonight. Lippmann will know all about it in the morning. Hello, international call London, England, please. Ten to one, Peel claims that we blew it and we're covering up. No, Burnside won't let that happen. <laughs> Burnside won't be in a position to stop it. Benza? Willie? I said, someone's been whispering in Bishop's ear. He's hauled off. And the other party? Well, the other party tried to keep a date this afternoon. But they're bound to have some break-off procedure, aren't they? I don't really think there's any percentage in chasing either of them now. Can we narrow down the time when our boy got the tip off? Oh, could have been any time in the last 24 hours. Now, Mike's not known to him, and he couldn't have seen me because he was in his office from the time of my arrival until after he aborted a three o'clock meet. Then someone's made someone else very happy with a phone call. Too true. There's going to be a few nervous breakdowns here. The only thing I can suggest is we start tracking the romantic lead. You know, the Swedish blonde. Yes, yeah, she could, but she should have been included in the break-off. But what you could... Hang on. I don't think they'll be able to make it all that clean. No, I said hang on. Jeff doesn't know I'm here. That ought to tell you something. No, I'm talking to myself. Willie, I think I've been incredibly vain. I thought I had a romantic lead of my own, but that wasn't what she was telling me. Um, I hope you're still talking to yourself, eh? Yes, I am. OK, Willie, drop it. Get yourself and Mike back to London, first flight in the morning. Harry's here now. Do you want to speak to him at all? Yeah, tell him to carry on as usual, but he's not to alert Bishop in any way. I'll explain when I see you. Goodbye. Diops, let me talk to C. I've just been talking to Kane in Stockholm. I think Bishop's a company man. An agent of the CIA. All the evidence points to it. My request for CIA backup was a simple one. They owe me a couple of favours, but they refused it. Yes? Well, I believe Ross queried that refusal, and then Langley would have had to tell him the truth. Meanwhile, they tipped Bishop to the fact that SIS was investigating him and told him to lie low. It's all a bit circumstantial, isn't it? So far. But today, Karen Milner met me at lunchtime and she revealed two things. One, the CIA checked Willie's departure from Heathrow. Now, that's very unusual. And two? She was giving me this information without Jeff Ross's knowledge. Why should she tell you at all? She knows the special section's in trouble at this moment.
CIA has penetrated the government, the Ministry of Defence. Actually, to buy into SIS. Well, I don't think they bought in, sir. Bishop has been brilliant since the day he joined SIS. He was CIA recruited before he joined us? Why not? I mean, it would explain why he's so dedicated, too good to be true. Working day and night, never putting a foot wrong. In line for higher things. Director of intelligence, head of a key station, maybe deputy chief one day. When all UKIs only material suddenly becomes US UKIs only. The CIA didn't tip uh, Littman, the British businessman. No, which makes me think that Littman was being used by Bishop as a cutout to put distance between himself and the KGB girl, Gustafsson. To lessen the chance of discovery by us of the Swede. Mm. But if Littman is working for the KGB, what the hell is Bishop giving him? False CIA material marked US UK eyes only, but backed, of course, by genuine SIS goodies to authenticate himself. He's got to be stopped. But obliquely. We need the special relationship with the CIA. We can't put it at risk just to show them how clever we are. No. And if we make a straight, direct accusation... Or even let them know that we're sure that it's Bishop. It'll drive a wedge between us. That mustn't happen, Neil. If we lose the special relationship, we may as well all pack up and go home. Which means we've got to have a damn good cover story when we get rid of Bishop. With your permission, sir, I'd like to do it through Ross. Oh. Not sure. You've got a problem, you know. You've got to find a legitimate excuse for firing Bishop without revealing what we know, even to him. I think I'd take a look at Bishop's personal records, see if I can find something to bite on. All right. But be careful. I shall, sir. Oh, uh, the Americans wanted Martica, too. So Bishop wouldn't have tipped the polls. So? Well, it must have been Wheatley's check that did it. The deputy chief will be back tomorrow. That's what I was thinking, sir. One thing at a time, Neil. You're about to walk a tightrope with the CIA. I appreciate that, sir. Well, don't fall off. Or you'll take the special relationship with you. Yes, sir. Well, come on, sit down, Neil. You're making me nervous. Hmm. Uh, you want some coffee or tea? No, thanks. Well, I hear Karen enjoyed her little dinner last night. Did she? <laughs> Come on, you know damn well she did. Uh, of course, she was a bit upset with the company, not allowing her to go to Stockholm. But then so was I. Thanks, so, anyway. So how's it going up there? Well, Willie's come up with a crazy theory, but it does seem to fit. Oh? Well, we're certain the Gustafsson girl's KGB, and that Lippmann's their link to Bishop. Any proof of Bishop's involvement? He's far too clever for that. But we can't believe he's KGB. He's done too many things against them in the past that he needn't have done just to hold down his job. Well, what else could he be? Well, as I said, it's Willie's idea, not mine. Go on. Bishop's parents, of course, are British. But he was born in Canada. Led a fairly nomadic childhood, including a year at American University. But he went back to Canada to finish his education. So? Well, we know Canadian intelligence is struggling to get into the big league. Yeah, I suppose it would fit if he considers... We think so. What are you going to do, Neil? Recall him, ask for his resignation. On the condition, of course, he doesn't tip Lippmann, which we assume he doesn't want to do anyway. And then? Well, we'll make a present of Lippmann to MI5. What about Bishop? Too embarrassing to accuse the Canadians. So, if he goes quietly, we'll just put it down to experience. Thanks for letting me know. How's it going on the Warsaw front? Peel gets back in the morning. Good luck. We only need a slice of it sometime. Yeah. Sorry, sir. I was in the ops room. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, sir. Well, you can tell him yourself, Matthew. I've no doubt at all that Wheatley was lying. The man's desperate to be the next DAS. He'd sell his own grandmother, let alone Wallace, to get the job. Well, we can make sure that doesn't happen. Indeed, sir. At the same time, you should do something about the number two, Sherburn. 
terrible crawler. I'm grateful, sir. Proves I haven't forgotten the old interrogation technique, sir. No, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, Neil, sandbag is back, eh? Any minute now, sir. I think I'd better see Wallace today, just in case he feels he was under a cloud. Yes, sir. Send him up to my office, will you? Under a cloud. Wonderful. Mm. Well, I suppose we should be grateful that Peel found us. Even more grateful that Karen gave you the word on Bishop. That must have been very tough for her, you know. I mean, she didn't actually betray her own agent. At the same time, she gave you a chance. Yes, she did. I suppose she could rationalise it. She knew that if Peel went against us on Warsaw and we couldn't hack the Stockholm job, you, Mike, and I would go. So what? Well. It's been nice to think that any CIA officer would see a fully operational special section as more important than one agent inside the friendly service. Well, you think that's where she did it? Whatever the reason, she had a lot of guts. She's a stupid bitch. You're not grateful to her. When I want someone to be sorry for me, I'll ask. I'm sorry for you now. The best you can do is kick her in the teeth. She put personal considerations before professional ones. Do that in this business and you're dead. Maybe you're dead already. Go on. I sometimes wonder how much of you died in Berlin a year ago. I mean, what are, what are you afraid of? You're afraid to reach out a hand in case somebody might take it, aren't you? Get out. Well, tell me one thing. What's wrong with Karen Milner? Why do you resent her so much? Because she's alive.